Hi there and welcome back. Today we're making this macrame bee wall hanging as per your request. So thank you for the pattern request. Not only am I going to teach you how to make this pattern, I'm going to teach you how to attach it onto a piece of driftwood without tying your lark's head knots around the wood, blocking its beauty. Also on the next screen, make sure you take a screenshot of the grid pattern on your device, whether you're watching from a cell phone or a laptop or an iPad, whatever you're watching, make sure you take a screenshot because you are going to need that. Okay, now let's get started. Don't worry, I will have links to some of the products in the description box. If you don't have access to a pretty cool looking piece of driftwood like I do here, don't sweat it because you can always use a 12 inch wooden dowel. I recommend using single strand cotton rope for this project and for any vertical double half inch projects really. And the reason why is because your knots lie flat on the single strand as opposed to what it would do on a three ply. And I will be using yarn for our working cords. The reason why I like yarn is because it's cheaper and it comes in so many different colors. I am using the size Aran. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but basically it is a medium worsted weight yarn or a size four. And as far as the driftwood goes, you wanna make sure that it is a little bit on the thicker side because we will be hammering into it later. Yep, I will be wielding a hammer, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so since we're not working directly off of our piece of driftwood, we're going to have to work off of something. So we're going to be working off of our 20 inch strand of cotton rope. Attach all 22 cords using a lark's head knot onto your strand of rope. To tie a lark's head knot, you want to fold your cord in half, find the loop end, place the loop behind your strand, and then thread your tail ends through the loop. And that is how you tie a lark's head knot. Now, if you're one of the peoples who do not have a piece of driftwood, what you can do is tie your lark's head around your wooden dowel, just like so in the screen on the left. Alrighty, so what you're gonna do is continue tying all 22 cords onto your strand or your wooden dowel. Once all your cords are on there, if you're working off of your wooden dowel, you're going to be getting right into your pattern right away. But if you're like me and you're working off of a piece of driftwood, particularly one that is not even at the bottom, what we're going to need to do is create what I call headspace at the top. And this is going to vary in size depending on your driftwood. To create headspace, you want to use the same background color as our B, and we're just going to add a little bit more length at the top. I'm using the color Jasmine for mine. Okay, so let's start tying our knots. We're going to start on this very first cord on the left. Working with a long strand of your off-white color, we're going to tie a vertical double half hitch knot. We're going to tie our knot around the very first cord and you want the short tail end on your left and the long on your right. You want to make a loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop. This is half of your vertical double half hitch knot and essentially it's just looped around your cord at this point. To make this an actual secure knot, what you want to do is repeat the same thing. So you want to make a loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop. Cinch it up a little bit, but not too tight because you want to be able to slide it all the way up to the top of your work. Once your knot is at the top, that's when you can make your adjustments. To tie the next knot, you want to make sure your yarn is behind your next strand of rope. Make your loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop, but this time you want to cinch it up all the way up to the top. Then you want to complete your knot. So make a loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop, and then cinch all the way up to the top. And that is how you tie a vertical double half hitch knot. We're going to continue doing this all the way straight across, working from left to right, right to the very end of this row. Alrighty, so now that we completed the very first row, what we're going to need to do is go back in the opposite direction. 
Working with the same strand of yarn, you're going to take it and you're going to pull it behind your last strand of rope. So now your yarn is going to be on the left side. You're going to make a loop on your left this time. Wrap your cord around and through the loop and then cinch up to the top. And then you're going to repeat the same thing. So make a loop on your left, wrap your tail end around and through the loop. So essentially it is the same thing, but in reverse. If this is your first macrame pixel pattern, you might find it a little bit challenging. I do think that this is beginner friendly, but this is more advanced beginner, if you know what I mean. If you do find that you're struggling, feel free to check out my playlist where I have smaller patterns available. Okay, so at this point I ran out of yarn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach a new piece, just like we did at the very top, only we're going in reverse this time. So if you ever find that you run out of length of your cord, all you have to do is just attach a new piece, just like we did at the very start. The only difference right now is that we're going back in the opposite direction, which means our short tail end will have to be on the right hand side this time. This is why I don't give out specific measurements for our working yarn, because we're always going to have to attach a new piece. However, I do like working with 60 inches at a time, which is roughly about my arm span. Once you have your new strand of yarn on there, with these small tail ends, you just want to make sure that they're tucked behind your work. And then you just carry on tying your vertical double half inch knots just the same as you were before, like you never ran out of yarn at all. Ta-da! My headspace is now finally done. I am comfortable with this length and I think it works out perfectly with my piece of driftwood here. I did about eight rows, but of course it will be different for you depending on your piece of driftwood. This extra space at the top is what I call the header and its job is just to make sure that everything is even, even when my driftwood is not the correct shape. Next, we're going to start working on our actual pattern. All right, so for the next couple of rows, it is nothing new. It is the same color and the same thing that we were doing before. The only thing that's different is that you want to make sure that you're marking off each row that you complete. I like using a highlighter for this, but you can use whatever you fancy. I jumped ahead a little bit here, and as you can see, if you take a look at our pattern here, what we need to do now is switch to a different color. I'm using a very dark brown color, but of course you can use black. Attach it just like you normally would. And then, as you can see by our pattern here, we need to switch back to the off-white color. And don't worry, this is super easy. To switch back to your off-white color, all you have to do is lay your dark piece down flat, then take your previous color, and what you wanna do is lift up your filler cords and run your yarn all the way across the bottom in the back. Make sure it's on top of your last previous cord. Place down your filler cord, and then carry on tying your vertical double half hitch knots the same as you were before. The only thing you have to be careful about is when you're running it behind your work, not to pull too tight, otherwise it might cause your work to pucker. It's better to have your cords a little loose in the back than too taut. Okay, so I think you've got the hang of it now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zigzag all the way down our grid pattern. Yay, we've made it all the way to the very end of our pattern. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna clean up the mess on the back. Yep, it is a mess, isn't it? <laughs> but don't worry, all you have to do is grab any two strands of yarn that are close together and tie a double overhand knot and then just snip off the excess yarn. All right, so once you've cleaned everything up on the back, we're gonna set our work aside and we're gonna take care of our driftwood. 
So I have a separate video where I explain how to clean and prepare driftwood. However, in this video, I am going to seal it with Mod Podge. Normally, I like to do this ahead of time and do a big batch. However, for this project, I only have this one piece of driftwood and it's a lot quicker and easier for me to just use Mod Podge. But if you wanna see how I prepare my driftwood, feel free to check out that video. I'll leave it in the cards above. While my driftwood dries, what I'm gonna be working on is the backing of my wall hanging. I have a complete tutorial on how to add a backing and a signature to your work. I'll leave the link to that in the cards above if you wanna check that out. However, I'm gonna go ahead and zip through it in this video as well, just because I kind of find it annoying when other YouTubers send you to 20 different videos when you just wanna see how it's done. Does anyone else find that annoying or is that just me? <laughs> Anyways, I'm using fusible fleece for my backing and you can find that on Amazon. And what I'm doing is measuring out my backing and it is about a half an inch smaller than the original size of my wall hanging. Once it's cut out, I'm going to iron it onto the back of my wall hanging. While my backing sets, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a piece of ribbon and then I am going to add my signature with a permanent fabric marker. Then I folded the ends in and pressed it with my iron. Then with fabric glue that works with fabric and ribbon, I'm gonna go ahead and tack down some of these little extra knots that are hanging out on the side that were just kind of missed with the backing. And I'm also gonna go ahead and glue down my signature. Now I've seen other ways where people use a stamp for their signature or they print it out on their printer, but I kind of really like the handwritten label. In my mind, it's just a little bit more authentic and special. It's kind of like if Da Vinci decided to just stamp his work as opposed to signing it, you'd probably want the signature and not the stamp. Anyways, right now I am using another strand of ribbon and lining the sides and I haven't actually tacked this down yet. I don't know whether or not I want to do that. Let me know in the comments, should I add the ribbon or not? And finally, we're going to attach our work onto our driftwood. To hang it onto the wall, I'm going to be using sawtooth hangers and we're also going to need our staple gun as well as some E6000 super glue and make sure you get the clear kind. Okay, so before we attach it, what we need to do is clean up the ends here. To do this, all you have to do is just tie a regular overhand knot right at the end here, and then just snip off the excess. Now, you wanna make sure that it's lined up absolutely perfectly, and then mark it off with pencil. I don't know if you can see there, but I do have it marked off. And then that is gonna be our guide for where we're gonna staple it. Grab your staple gun, and I like the guide on this. It's supposed to be for wires, but it works perfectly for rope. And we're gonna staple it onto our driftwood. Now, when you're stapling, make sure that you have the correct size staples. You wanna make sure that your driftwood is thick Otherwise, your staples are just going to go right through to the other side. Before you go ahead and tack down the middle, make sure it's perfect. If your staples are sticking up a little bit, go ahead and tap those down, as well as hammer in your hanger onto your driftwood. They are really tiny nails to hammer in, and I found that holding them with pliers helped a ton. Once you're happy with that, what we're going to do is flip it back over and we're gonna actually tack it down a little bit with E6000. Just be mindful when you're gluing, you do not wanna flood it. You just want a, a little bit of glue to tack it down. If you want to make a pattern request, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I will see what I can do. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next one.